I thought it was uh, really uh, a page turner, as they say. It's really sharp, it's really clear, it moves really quickly. Uh, it gave me a real sense of the world that these people all live in. And it's not a world that I particularly know, so I thought it was a really accurate representation of um, the world of lobbying. The fast pace of the dialogue is a real technique. I mean, in life we talk very quickly, if you think about it. We, we talk very quickly, our thoughts tumble over one another, we kind of interrupt each other, and we understand exactly what people are saying. For some reason, in drama, we tend to slow things down a little bit because we think that things need to be made more clear. It seems odd that when we talk so quickly in life that we have to do that. So to read a script that seems to replicate how people talk in life, and not only that, but working in an industry where fast thinking, fast moving, instant decision making is absolutely vital. It means reading it and seeing the way the characters spoke to one another. Uh, really, I just thought it was really, really well done and something that because of the technical aspect of it, I really wanted to have a go at, to see what you can get away with. Of course, the balance you have to strike between a very complicated issue-based drama like this and the speed of thought and action that the characters have is you have to kind of tread a very fine line between uh, reality and the natural speed of thought and speech that they have, but also you need to make what they're saying understood because it's a very complicated subject matter. I think the humour will come from the interaction of the characters, the smart, quick thinking of all of those characters in the two different uh, uh, agencies, the two different lobbying firms. There's obviously the very uh, doer kind of attitude of um, Cole Kravitz Waterman, the slightly right-wing agency, if you will. And then there's the kind of smart, wise-cracking element that you get at uh, Peterson Wyatt, a little younger, a little smarter, uh, and the juxtaposition, I think, of those jokes and wisecracks along with the kind of uh, you know, importance of the drama and the subject matter, hopefully will give it a great balance. I play a character called Rodolfo Schmidt, who is the head of, uh, or the CEO of Peterson Wyatt, which is the slightly left-wing, more democratic lobbying firm that is trying to get an amendment to the gun law. And he knows that her character is, Jessica's character this is, is very capable, uh, probably the best there is. So he's heard that uh, she's pro Heaton Harris, which is the law that they're, they're trying to get passed, and uh, not on the side of the authorities within her uh, lobbying firm. So he goes to woo her and gets her to come over to his side. Jessica Chastain plays Elizabeth Sloan, and she brings a strength and an authority and a believability to the particular type of character she's playing. I mean, I suppose lobbyists in reality are very uh, capable and wickedly functional people, but uh, she is creating this character who's almost out of control. She's on the edge, you know, in order to achieve what she achieves, she's employing <coughs> methods that aren't necessarily acceptable. And over the arc of the story, what happens is that you see this very, very efficient woman who, by carrying the burden of having to achieve on her shoulders, is eventually battened down, battered down by the establishment and almost wiped clean. Marigold Hotel Films means he is capable and he knows exactly how to make a film. What I love about him, actually, and it was obvious to me in the read-through, is how in charge he is. Um, it's, it's become fashionable for directors to just throw things together in the edit and just see what they can get when they're shooting. And he is very much in control of shooting. And you know that when he comes to set, he's prepared because he knows exactly what he wants from the scene, why the scene exists in the movie. Uh, the, the incredible amount of preparation that he did with um, Chris Tickier, the producer, and Jonathan Pereira, the writer, before we even began, was enormous. Uh, so they absolutely hammered out what they wanted this film to be, why all the scenes were relevant, how the characters would work with one another, and ultimately what would make the story interesting. Rodolfo is not so much about um, the technicalities, 
of being a lobbyist. It's much more, I think, the type of guy he is that he brings to the story because Jessica's been working in a very, very sterile, very driven, very ambitious environment full of right-wing Republican types. And Rodolfo is the opposite to that. I think he's somebody who is benign, he's very moral, he brings her on board because he admires her techniques, but when she starts to go off the rails, he's the guy that tells her this is unacceptable. He lets her know that the firm has certain standards she can't drop below. So he's a very um, avuncular uh, presence who um, I think is something she hasn't been used to. But he kind of winds her up like a little toy and lets her go to see what happens. But when it goes too far, he lets her know. It's almost a thriller. It's like the world of lobbying as portrayed in the film is you never quite know who's got the upper hand. Um, and you're constantly wondering uh, who's powerful, who's winning, and what the next twist or turn is going to be. And Jonathan Pereira, the writer, has written a wonderful story with lots of twists and turns, so you never quite know how it's going to pan out. So it's exciting, and it's um, a story about which we're all talking at the moment right now.